Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern Ned Reynolds in the studio on a Friday morning. So yesterday was opening day for both the St. Louis Cardinals and the Royals. Everyone was happy until the games started. <laughs> Keep in mind, we have 161 yes, more games to go a long way, but it was not a great opening day for either one of the teams. Now, the Cardinals, you kind of knew they were going to have problems because Los Angeles is really, really good. The Dodgers have a fine team, best team money can buy, and they knocked <laughs> off the Cardinals 7-1, to scored two runs in the first inning, and <laughs> interesting thing about St. Louis, the Cardinals had three hits in the game, and they were all three by the same person, Paul Goldschmidt. Talk a little bit more about that later. Royals had their problems. Of course, they, they knew they would. Minnesota Twins threw uh, Pablo Lopez up there, and he's one of the best pitchers in the game. And he held Kansas City. Five scattered hits uh, he gave up, and then the relief corps gave up none. Four to one, the Minnesota Twins beat the Royals, but there's more baseball to go. Looking interestingly at the weather map here, now the Cardinals and Dodgers have a four-game series. It continues tonight late tomorrow afternoon, and then Sunday night, which is actually a late afternoon game as well. There's a lot of rain. Who would have thought this? <laughs> rain schedule for Los Angeles, so they may have some uh, problems out there, but we'll wait and see. Well, like you said, there's, you know, there's a lot of games left. Okay. So, uh, and actually, there's some happening today, so don't freak out about it. Um, we talked a little bit about this yesterday, uh, the signing of a rugby player for the Kansas City Chiefs. Very interesting, to say the least. Looks like he could be of help, but again, it's one of those low-risk, high-reward if it works out. That's, the, that's the question, if it works out. A kid's from Wales. His name is Lewis Rees Zamet. It's a hyphenated name. Z-A-M-M-I-T is the second portion of the hyphenated name. He is from Wales. He's only 23 years old, and he is a rugby player. So how does that fit into American football? Well, in this case, it does, because he could present a very interesting weapon under the new kickoff rules in which nobody moves other than the kicker and the guys who are going to catch the ball, or guy, whatever the case might be. Nobody else moves on the field until the ball is touched. Well, this kid has breakaway speed. Around the 40 and 4.3 something seconds which is lightning fast and when you get a kid like that who has the rugby acumen about him and and knows what to do well that can that can have some benefits i can see him working in well but actually though you you made a very good point though it is it's a low risk high reward situation i could pay him very much and the chances of his making the team probably minimal but he does hold those skills, and that makes a difference. Definitely could. And again, I mean, who knows? In Beach, we trust. Where is the golf tournament this weekend, and when am I taking a nap? This is the Houston Open going on. It's the Houston Open Children's Hospital Open, and it's not one of the major lucrative tournaments on the tour. It's about $9 million purse is what they're playing for, so the winner walks away with over a million. <laughs> That's considered no pay. Come on, people. Anyway, first-round leader is Taylor Moore. He's a one-time golfing racer back from the University of Arkansas. But uh, here's Scotty Scheffler looming right behind. Now, these guys are all honing their games and getting ready for the Masters, which is coming up in just two weeks. Well, in between all the egg dying and hiding and finding this weekend, it looks like I'll get some nappy time (laughs) while some golf plays. The dance has resumed on the basketball courts, who played last night in the Sweet 16. Well, my sleeper team, the one that I thought was going to come through and win it, and actually not a sleeper at all, they've been number one in America, played like they were asleep last night. That was uh, Arizona, played Clemson. Arizona's a better team man-to-man than Clemson and did not win. Clemson won at 77-72. Arizona missed shot after shot, layup after layup, missed rebounds, played poor defensively, and yet they almost won the game, which tells you the difference between the two. But you've got to be consistent, and Arizona was not. Clemson beat them, knocked them out of there, 77-72. Biggest upset of the day, Alabama, North Carolina. Bama wins it. 89-87, 89-87, playing at the TD Garden in Boston. I beg your pardon, no, they didn't either. They played in the Crypto Center. Playing in Los Angeles, the Crimson Tide comes away with an upset victory, 89-87. Connecticut and San Diego State. <clears throat> Connecticut is the defending champion going for a repeat, and they're pretty good. Played San Diego State, a rematch of last year's championship game. Connecticut wins this one, running San Diego State out of the ballpark in Boston, 
to 52. A 30 point win for the Connecticut Huskies. They are very good. So is their women's team. Illinois and Iowa State playing in the second game. This one goes to the Illini, 72-69 to in a thriller. So you'll have Illinois and Connecticut playing for a berth in the Final Four, and that'll be coming up this weekend. Well, I haven't got a chance to check and see how my bracket's doing in the meantime, um, but you know what? It's always a blast either <laughs> way because we got plenty of sports happening right now. Um, the ladies, of course, are a little bit ahead where the men's are. They're marching towards the Final Four. When does that start? Well, it's it's also this weekend, and it begins tonight for the ladies, and they have their game. Incidentally, the, the men's other bracket in the Final Four is to be contested tonight, and that'll be in Detroit and in Dallas. And as far as the ladies' games are concerned, they're playing in two pods, that's how you describe it, in Albany, New York and in Portland, Oregon. South Carolina, Indiana. South Carolina's undefeated, number one team in the country. Indiana is pretty good. Are they as good as South Carolina? We'll find out. They play in Portland, Oregon tonight. North Carolina State and Stanford also playing in Portland. Now, what about Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes? Well, they are playing tomorrow. They play Colorado. That'll be in Albany, New York. And the other starlet of women's basketball, a gal named Paige Beckers of Connecticut, who is, well, one-time player of the year a couple years ago before she had a devastating knee injury. She'll take her Connecticut Lady Huskies against Duke. And that game will be out in Portland, Oregon as well. So the ladies, ladies uh, final four team or teams, I should say, will be decided on Tuesday. The men will be on Sunday night. Like I said, a lot of action, and we do have some action for the uh, Missouri State Bears this weekend, mm-hmm. and uh, Jury is also playing, right? Jury, jury series began yesterday. They'll take Easter Sunday off, but the, the Bears are going to play on Easter Sunday. The Bears are hosting Illinois State. This is a conference game or series of games played tonight at Hammonds Field, then tomorrow afternoon and Sunday afternoon. Jury opened their three-game series with Quincy yesterday, and Drury won 9-8. to eight in 10 innings. They won it on a walk-off base hit. So good luck to the Dury Panthers. Good luck to the Missouri State Bears on Easter weekend. Some big conference games coming up. Hell yeah, good luck. And good luck to you finding out uh, all those Easter eggs on Sunday, my guy. I hope you get more than most. Ned, you have a great weekend, and I'll see you on Monday.